Hi, welcome to Global One Media. Today, I'm joined by Jason Chen, who's uh, the co-founder, CEO, president, and director of Just Kitchen, which is a ghost kitchen operator and licensor of delivery-only food brands across Asia with plans to expand globally. So hi, Jason. Thanks for joining us today. How are you? Hi, Bastian. Uh, good afternoon to you and uh, good morning from Taiwan. And uh, very, um, I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, it's um, a pleasure to be on on Global One and uh, and going through this interview and then showcasing a little bit about Just Kitchen. Excellent. So to start off, um, could you give us a brief overview of yourself, of Just Kitchen, and how it all started? Sure. Um, I um, got involved into the, the, F, the food and beverage business back in 2012, traditional brick and mortar business. And as early as 2014, we really started seeing a, 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 an erosion into the, the traditional business. Um, and it, it, erosion meaning that it, it was evolving into something new. Uh, pickup and delivery was on the rise. People were obviously, lifestyle was sh uh, shifting away from home cooking <clears throat> and convenience was becoming a very big thing. So as far back as 2014, um, del delivery had been growing at probably a, a you know a, a, a double digit low double digit growth year over year right. and then by towards the end of um, of the, the you know by the end sort of around 2015 2016 that's when the the delivery app started happening the driver network started started to form and really it was that time we really the, the, the industry the category sort of took shape to make to made it um, very frictionless for users to be ordering food from. Um, and then came 2019, um, me and some friends, we had been in the, the, food, the food and beverage business here in Taiwan. We came across a, a large um, kitchen facility that was up for sale. And it was, it's about 18,000 square feet. And we were initially going to use it for our traditional business. But as for traditional restaurants go, a lot of things are prepped on site. So it wasn't really a, a right fit. But it so happened that we, a bunch of us, uh, you know, me with an F&B background, um, uh, my co-founder, uh, Kai, who's in a, from a, a tech, tech background. Uh, interesting fact, he actually founded the game Guitar Hero. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Yeah. So he was the founder of that game. Right. And, uh, and a, a few others uh, in, in finance, um, in various different disciplines. And, uh, and we thought of the idea that the cloud kitchen concept was starting to take off in the US. And then we just basically took an adopt adoption of that cloud kitchen concept and, and sort of changed it into our own. And that's how we formed Just Kitchen back in 2019. Excellent. So um, what can you tell us about Just Kitchen's unique story and especially the, the portfolio of brands and why should investors be uh, paying attention? Sure. Yeah. Um, so what makes us different than, as I mentioned, the traditional cloud kitchen, typically a cloud kitchen, most people would think it's a, it's a large kitchen facility that's subdivided and then rented back out. It's kind of like a, we work type of model. Right. Um, we don't do that. We build all, all our own kitchens. So from the one side, we have a distribution network of kitchens. Mm -hmm. So we have the hub and then we have a lot of spokes and the spokes are smaller kitchens, uh, roughly around 1500 square feet. Uh, and they're strategically placed in locations that are high in demand for delivery. You, can, you know, it can be, it's usually in a very dense area, but it doesn't have to be on the front street because we're not catering to dining, um, dining customers. Mm -hmm. So it can be a block off, like off Main Street or off off Main Street. So obviously the rent's a lot cheaper, um, but at the same time, we can still service the, the, the area. Um, so it's this hub and spokes network of kitchen distribution that we that we've built throughout Taiwan and now into Hong Kong and into the Philippines and into uh, Malaysia. That's really broad. You know, it, it's allowed us to reach customers that a one cloud kitchen facility would not be able to reach because one cloud kitchen facility you can reach three and a half kilometers, five kilometers of a driver radius because any longer than that it would would not be convenient. Uh, for us, we have multiple locations. So all we do is basically we take the orders from the closest location and it delivers to the customers at the closest areas. So yeah, as a result, gets to the customers faster, fresher, and uh, and and food and you know food in much better better um, better um, sort of sort of 
you know, condition. Yeah. So, so that's on the one side, on the infrastructure side. And then on the other side of the spectrum, we also have curated a, a large portfolio, 32 brands of um, roughly about 60% of those brands are our, our own proprietarily because we have a, our own culinary team. Right. So we have 60% of those, those 32 brands are proprietary, we, meaning that we develop them ourselves in-house. And we can launch those brands as quickly as within six weeks. So that's given us the ability to, to be very agile and very quick to market. And the other 40% of the brands is also what really differentiates us and, and makes us unique. The other 40% of the brands are partnership brands. Um, they're partnership brands with companies like TGI um, Fridays, um, Paul, you know, Paul Bistro from Europe, um, IHOP, uh, you know, some international um, very recognizable brands. Right. So with the combination of, of recognizable brands and our agility, our agility to be able to create brands that can fulfill um, um, cuisine demand, uh, we feel that we have a very, very robust and very well-rounded um, portfolio of, of brands and menus to offer our customers. It's really interesting. And uh, I know you've been expanding uh, rapidly throughout Southeast Asia, uh, also with India as per your recent news release. Um, can you tell us a bit more about the technology and the systems that you use to be able to meet such huge demands across so many countries? Absolutely. So um, because we always had expansion, global global expansion um, or, or you know, Southeast Asia expansion initially in mind. So we build our tech stack um, with, you know, with that very purpose. So we knew that we had to you know, be, be borderless. We had to be, um, to be into different countries, you know, over, you know, language um, translation differences. So we built a, a robust um, sort of integratable platform, content management platform. So all our brands are uploaded, basically cloud-based. Um, it's integrated with our ERP system. So our, our resources, our resource planning is, is integrated into it, meaning that we know what, Inventory is coming in. What stock level is is you know if we're running short on stock level, it can call for um, reordering, wow. and also very importantly, it goes for it goes to food safety. You know we can monitor food you know first food first in first out, so we know that the freshest food is getting to our customers. So that's you know that's uh, the sort of the kitchen operation side, and it it obviously integrates into our our point of sales, um, our KDS which k- kitchen display. So all of it is integrated together. And on the other end, we integrate with um, the delivery service providers like Uber Eats, Food Panda, mm-hmm. Takeaway, Grab. Um, so the orders will come in, it automatically, it automatically feeds into our post system. And then we can, you know, then we can not going off you know, multiple, multiple tablets, but rather we just go off one system and we can see all the orders in one very clear, um, clearly uh, displayed manner. Great. We built that and that's allowed us and, and like I said, another very important layer to that is we have our virtual training um, system because we're going across different borders. We're training people in the Philippines, training people in Malaysia to, to onboard our brands. Um, so everything that we have, all the build charts, all the menu, all the recipes, and all the, the, the actual making of, of every single dish, it's all digitalized and it's all on our, um, our cloud-based and we call it JK University. So every one of our employees has to go through um, the university process, so they can they can they know how to put everything together. They know what to what to um, you know how to package it, how to plate it. Um, you know, because you're in a restaurant, you plate something. It's got to be it's got to be done a certain way. When we do our packaging, we do it the same thing. You know, certain things have to be in certain proportions to make it aesthetically pleasing as well as well as taste good. Yeah. So that that tech stack has really allowed us to go into the different regions very quickly. And then as a result, uh, as you mentioned, our partnership with, um, with, uh, with our partner in India, Kitchen Ad, um, this system became something that we can use as a licensing model because over there, they have, they have 300 kitchens. Um, but because of COVID, because of travel restrictions, it's not as convenient for us to go over there and train them physically. But we, have, we, we can basically let, you know, let, this, let them use the system and they can learn every step that we learn and basically get the same training that we each one of our internal employees get. So in a way, it's it's something we built for ourselves, but now it's something that we can use um, as a tool for, for licensing as well. Very cool. So as a last question, what exciting Just Kitchen uh, catalyst should investors be looking out for in the coming months? 
Well, I think the most exciting thing to us right now is our expansion to Southeast Asia, um, uh, you know, into Thailand, into the Philippines and into Malaysia. And the reason why is because the economic structure there is really, well, first of all, there's a, there's, there's a, a very quickly growing middle class that's adopting to this, to this, um, this delivery um, business very quickly, both in, in terms of being in the business as, as, a, as a writer or as a delivery person or and as also as a customer. So it's a, it's a, it's a very strong growth um, sort of industry in those areas. And, uh, and for us to go in there, the economics work very well because they're, they're densely populated, meaning that a driver can probably do up to four or five um, trips an hour versus in North America, they're only doing one trip an hour. So that translates to the delivery service providers can charge the merchants, i.e. us, uh, less commission because they're making more trips. So that's a huge you know, saving for us economically. Second, the labor force there is, is um, we were able to come in at single digits on our labor cost. Um, we can go in there with real estate. Building cost is a lot cheaper as well. So our, our rental or occupancy um, rate is literally a two or three percent uh, of our gross sales. So with all that, all that put together, it becomes uh, Southeast Asia becomes a very attractive place to do business. You know, Taiwan is pretty good, um, but that it's you no, know, it's 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 even better over there. So we're really excited about our, ex- our expansion there, and we've got some great local partners in the Philippines and in Malaysia, and uh, and I think for for the next six months to come, there will be a lot of exciting um, developments in those areas, um, i.e. new kitchens, uh, new partnerships. And we're looking forward to partnering with local brands over there and to be able to bring it onto our platform and grow our portfolio of 32 brands to maybe 50 brands by the end of the year. So these are the, the very exciting things that we're looking forward to. That's really great. Well, thanks a lot, Jason, for all the information and for your time today. Uh, We look forward to seeing the next updates and developments from Just Kitchen. Uh, So, yeah, thank you very much. My pleasure. Yeah, uh, I, I look forward to our next update. 